Hey guys, just wanted to give a uh, quick update on the stuff that I've had going on here. Let me finish getting up the stairs. All right, so the first thing that I had to do was find the matching pair of the PSP Platinum Series. These are the S2s. It's been a while, so I can make them match the, uh, the front stage there, but I have them. They came in, I ended up finding two pairs from different people, different websites, different wait times, different prices. <laughs> it was a pain in the ass, but I got them. Um, for those who aren't aware, they don't make the speakers anymore, so they aren't so easy to come across. All right, so I finally have them in. I have them mounted, good to go, wires ran. They are looking alive. So that was one of the biggest things that I've done over the past two months, or just hunting these things down. I've been on the lookout for them for a few years, so for their two pairs to come up in a couple months, it was kind of like, oh, just lucky, you know, I got so lucky. Um, this DVD, this Bolts DVD rack is new, new-ish, I should say. Um, I do have the uh, Bolts matching AV stand, but when I moved my equipment, the AV stand didn't fit, so now it's being repurposed into my concession area, because this used to be along the wall here. So I'm trying to keep the aisles as clear as possible now. So, Concession stand done. Um, the only thing I want to do here that's left is I want to buy one of the uh, Blockbuster cutout metal tin, san tin signs to put here. Um, just to, you know, make it seem like you're picking out concessions and a movie and going from there. Um, another thing that I had to do, which it kind of makes me giggle because these DIY panels, they're great, guys. I mean, the echo in here is very minimum. I mean, this goes... For those who actually know about, you know, acoustic panels and you can get them f and make them for different frequencies if you want it to sound more airy. Like, I just went with the straight DIY. Um, these are filled with rocks, rock wool. So uh, that's what I went with. I went with the uh, reflection points. So that's what I did. So I have them on both sides there, but they are on the wall securely which was a big thing for me because let me tell you, they were not before. And any time these full Martys hit, they would fall off the wall and scare the shit out of me. So they are finally attached <laughs> and good to go. Um, one thing I know I'm gonna catch some heat for are these guys, which are the new Atmos. I took out my Paradigm AMS 150s and replaced them. So here's a quick little story on those. So those guys were $650 each. And I had four of them. They were positioned wrong in my in my ceiling. So I was looking up other options. And while I was finding out the uh, the positioning from Stephen Smith, he was like, hey, man, you should probably get some <laughs> different speakers that are at an angle because you, my, mine are just, you know, they're, they were not giving me the effect at all, even if they were in the right positioning. So I've got these per his uh, suggestion. And I couldn't be happier. I mean, not just installation-wise, but sound-wise, they sound way better than my Paradigms. Like, day and night, crazy difference. And, you know, as you can tell, they are angled at my main listening position, which is this guy right here. Um, but what I mean by catching heat is, I know I'm supposed to timber match, but even if I did find another pair or another two pairs of these, if I were to build a bracket and have them angled, they're gonna be down about a foot, and I'm already only working with three feet, but not just that, with my screen being so high, it would be blocking my projector, so I had to go with something that was in ceiling. And these are what I went with. Um, am I missing out? Probably, but am I happy? I am for now, but uh, you know you know how these upgrades keep going. Um, let's see, what else have I done? Oh, I finally painted my stage black. This was just bare wood for a long time. I know putting carpet on it is better for sound and um, also for light reflections and stuff, but I'm just not there yet. I did, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but I did go and buy this cool fabric from, I think it was Joanne Fabric. These are Harry Potter signs, if you're not familiar. I just set it down back there because it was black and gold and it just kinda, you know, black and gold little symbols just kinda reminded me of a theater, so I went with it. It wasn't expensive. I think it was like $30 to cover the backstage there. I just wanted to see what it looked like and I'm happy with it so far. So let's keep going here. So I did move my equipment up here. You can't really see it, but all my equipment is across because when I was giving demos, 
I couldn't see the equipment because it was behind me and back in this corner. And I couldn't tell, you know, if things were clipping and whatnot. So I wanted to relocate them up here. I do have extra panels. So if I'm watching a movie, I just put the panels in front of them so you can't see the lights. Um, it is vented in the back. So, I mean, it's getting proper ventilation. So let me just update you guys with uh, some of the equipment I have here besides the Xbox. So I have an AB International 6300. I have a Cinepro 3K6 II, a Marantz 7704, a Cinenova Grande, five channel, and I have this for sub duty. Um, the Cinepro over there is pushing my mains and this one takes over with the surround right rear and all four Atmos. I know it's way, you know, a lot more power than the Atmos probably need. Cause I think this is like 400 watts into eight ohm. So, I mean, this, this is a, the speakers aren't lacking power. <laughs> Let's just go there. Um, I am running an Oppo for my DVD player. I also get in a lot of shit for that too. People are just, you know, there are just some non Oppo fans out there. Let's just say that. Um, I do have four Martys, two full, two mini. Wait, are they mini? Yeah, two full, two mini stacked on top of each other from, these are the GSG kits with the UM 1822s. Um, I am more than happy with them. I will probably do some of the behind the screen, maybe on each side or along the back here. I'm not sure. Not that I really need the base, but you know, we got, we got to keep looking forward to something, right? Um, so let me just give you a quick little heads up on what really changed over the last two months. So not only did I have to rewire through the attic and whatnot, but the surround speakers, getting the DIY panels mounted, the RSL Atmos, um, the new Cinepro 3K6. I also was having a conversation, which I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Let me just go public with this. Steven Smith, I am so sorry for blowing up your inbox the way that I do, my man, but you have helped me a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, and I really, really, really appreciate it. Guys, just like the simplest thing that he had me do, which was the first thing, I went from my main listening position, measure, I did the string theory. I don't know if you guys have done it yet, but if you haven't, do it. Um, I measured there, and then I found out where my left and right speaker had to be. And just doing that made a huge difference sound quality-wise. It like opened up the front stage so much. Now like my entire wall sounds like there's sound coming from it. It's crazy. So these towers used to be on the inside of the subs and the subs were directly in the corner. So the, you know, it opened them up, I think like four and a half feet on each side. So it went, you know, eight, nine feet wider than what it was combined, you know, only, oh, sh yeah, something like that. I'm probably way overdoing that there because these are two feet wide. So two and a half. Okay. Yeah. Five feet wider. And that five foot actually made a big difference. Then he told me to go 90 degrees and ear height with these, which I'm not sure if you can tell, but these are pretty much dead on ear height, ear level. And then my surround rears had to go an inch and a half higher, um, only because this is, <laughs> this is a window here. And I just went with some planks to go across and I, I had to get a good stud. But I guess the most important thing was creating distance between the Atmos and the rear section because these little black guys were where my other surrounds were. And after Stephen Smith helped me spec out where they were supposed to go, I was, I think it's like 18 inches off and one foot off. So it was pretty off on there. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much my update. Things are painted, things are mounted, new amps, new wires, everything is ran and I am pretty happy with it right now. Don't know what the next step is going to be, but I appreciate you guys stopping in. Steven, again, thank you very, very, very much for being tolerant. All right, guys, thanks.